European speak because uh, after watching a lot of debates by Europeans, I know that I mean you've had a very great culture and civilization, but when it comes to speaking, I always thought you could do better on the radio than on a stage. Because some of the debate uh, competitions I went to, people were talking like robots. And uh, I don't know how India would have ever survived with speakers like that. You have 1.2 billion people and uh, you have to keep them in a democracy. You need to be speaking very well, otherwise people won't pay attention. People could be beating each other up. And because our re leaders are always uh, appealing to them, talking to them, getting them uh, feeling and emoting and reacting, that's why the country is in place. So, I feel uh, one of the most important things about debate is about speech. And speech is about connecting. So if you can't connect with your speech, there's no speech at all. I, I'm, I'm telling all this because uh, incidentally I've uh, worked uh, on radio, movies, uh, stage, television, newspapers. I was also an editor of a newspaper. So I think I've seen almost every facet of uh, communication and I've also spoken to a lot of people from a public platform. In India it's not difficult to get audience. I think, uh, I think I've even spoken to about 20,000 people in the audience once. Uh, so we had a very large conference in Karnataka. That's my state where I had to speak. So I think uh, when you get claps from people, that's when you know that you know, you've spoken. You can also get stones. You know, yeah. That's another thing. And it's very easy to get stones in my country. <laughs> they could throw anything on you, okay? I mean, I, uh, recently they had made a habit of throwing chuckles, sandals at uh, the politicians. And uh, uh, we also had instances of uh, uh, the audience uh, slapping leaders after the speech. <laughs> okay, so you have to be extremely careful about what you speak. But at the same time, you have a leader like uh, the current Prime Minister, who seems to be speaking very well. Though I don't personally like him very much, but I think he's extremely capable of uh, speaking. He was talking about intonation and uh, emotion and, uh, and the style of speech and everything. I think all these things, uh, which is very nice, for the first time I'm hearing all this in Europe, okay? I'm uh, somebody talking, I don't, but somebody talking and nobody practicing. Okay, <laughs> that's another thing. I'm very sorry, I'm being, I'm being very frank. But uh, the best speech comes only by speaking. Okay, the more you speak, the better speaker you become. Uh, for instance, uh, one of the greatest speakers I've seen in the world uh, is not from India, but uh, from the US, that's Obama. His first inaugural speech I thought was the best in the world because I watched people speak. I've been uh, a political uh, analyst in my country. I interview politicians. Politicians are supposed to be very slick and slimy and they can really escape and people... I have a reputation of really catching them, okay, on my shows. So, in fact, if you watch on YouTube, I have uh, interviewed one person, that was many years ago, I look very young in that. Uh, that is uh, a guest called Subramanian Swami, who is like a, a Harvard scholar, who is an expert in Chinese, economist and so many things. He's supposed to be one of the toughest politicians in uh, India, and I think I caught him off guard. What, I was trying to, what am I trying to say is, uh, this is something that I've been telling for a very long time about uh, debate too. I mean, what's the purpose of a debate? I can actually tell it with more confidence because the whole about thing about logic, there are only three countries that were in the forefront of developing logic. Three countries in the world, or three regions, or three civilizations. Can you tell me which were those three civilizations in the world which were famous for logic in the ancient world? India, Greece and China. Okay, so, but China, India had taken uh, logic uh, to a very um, uh, great extent even before the Greeks did it because uh, Indians were the first ones to actually bring uh, uh, argument into even the science of medicine because they said even for doctors it was important for them to argue on a medicine before administering it. So that you have to hear all sides of the uh, issue to be able to make the right decision. What is the purpose of a debate? That's what perhaps, you know, I mean, I would be speaking about when I speak to you about the battle and why we did it. The purpose of debate is to find 
solutions to make decisions. If there are no decisions made, there is no purpose of a debate at all. Why do we debate? Most people think debate is all about uh, two people standing and talking against each other or with two groups of people talking against each other. But I feel you are debating all the time. Like, you know, when you have to go to the toilet, when you have to eat, what you have to eat, when you have to drink, what you have to wear, you are debating all the time. 90% of the debate happens inside your head. That's why uh, I thought it was so important for us to get the world to know how important debate is. Debate is not an extracurricular activity, it's an activity of life. You understand? For you to survive, you need to know how to debate. And 99% of times, how to debate with yourself and win. <laughs> because most of the times, you lose with yourself. You want to go somewhere and your mind says, no, don't. But you want to go. Okay? And you say, wait, I'm making decisions. Some people live all their life trying to make decisions. Correct? Even about the people who want, whom they want to like, whom they want to hate, whom they want to break up with, whom they want to be friends with, whatever. Even about, you know, when they are happy being born. Okay? Some people are like, you know, the biggest question of who am I? You're debating all the time till you're dead. So what I'm trying to say here is like what he said. Ultimately it's about, like he said, about logic. I think in a very simple way I've tried to understand. In fact, uh, I've not heard your lecture, but this is something we've been doing too much with War Battle these days because logic is not just about uh, uh, debate or, you know, the kind of logic um, that was from the time of uh, Socrates to uh, Aristotle and thereof. But I think nowadays logic is extremely important because, uh, because the whole science is working on logic. And uh, the whole of our activity, there's logic to so many things that we are doing. And there are two things about the, the debate logic. Like we said, one is you spoke about conclusion. One is that you put forward the conclusion first and then you argue to justify the conclusion. Second is you argue and then you finally have the conclusion. There are two ways of doing it, right? So the logic in the beginning or the logic in the end, correct? I'm finding you're putting forth your arguments to prove either the preface or the conclusion. So, but about uh, what you were talking about uh, speech and so on, like there's so much difference. When you watch me speak and when you watch him speak, the Indian speaks with a lot of hands and face and <laughs> eyes and mouth and voice and everything because we are. I'm from the country where Bollywood is, right? <laughs> so, so we are very, very expressive. People say, there's actually one movie, one very old Bollywood movie, and somebody says, why do you cry so easily? She says, I'm Hindustani, I'm Indian. Okay, because Indians cry very easily, laugh very easily, they do everything very easily. I think that's why I always, you know, had a big problem with Indians talking more than working. Okay? <laughs> Indians talk a lot, all the time. You go anywhere, Indians are talking. And one day I realized, what would Indians do if they're not talking? They'll be fighting. What is better? You talk. At least your emotions are sated. The more you talk, the more your emotions are under control. The more you put out your thoughts, the more less repressed you are. The more less agitated you are, the more in control you are, the more human you become. So one day then I told myself, I will never object to Indians talking. Because otherwise, 1.2 billion people in one country don't talk, scary. <laughs> okay, that's why we have really invented, so we have 3,000 languages, okay? Okay? In my state, in Karnataka, it's every almost have about 16 languages. Okay? But, but nobody has any problem with anybody's language. Everybody is trying to learn everybody's language. Everybody is trying to talk. I myself speak about seven to eight languages. That's okay. But what's the ultimate purpose? Communicate. Correct? Build relationships. Know people. But in Europe, people don't want to know people. So why talk? Most people... My, from what I've understood, 
you have to really have formal introductions. You sit in a bus stop in, in, uh, in my uh, country, people come and talk to you. They say, where are you from? What are you doing? What did you eat? You want to go somewhere? I actually was so surprised. I went to a city like uh, closer to mine called Mysore, which is a heritage city where there are palaces. And so it's a beautiful city. And I was like, once uh, uh, I stopped the car a little away from one small shop where he was selling some snacks or something. The car was almost stopped about 20 meters away and I was asking for address and the guy who was actually preparing things in the shop, he came running to me leaving his customers to talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> you got it? So, because for these people, the pleasure of connecting is more important than even making money. You understand? But ultimately coming to the point about this, uh, I think ultimately it's not, we should not make a human activity like speech academic. We, it's, it's not, when you drink water, you're not saying it's H2O, <laughs> correct? You don't look at the hydrogen and oxygen molecules, you just look at water because you're thirsty. And, uh, and you drink, you don't say what this water is going to do, how it's going to do my stomach, how it's going to do my system, how it's going to be absorbed. You don't think about it, right? You just feel it. The most essential thing for speech is feeling. Like he was talking about, you know, when you say eagerly. I, I've been teaching English for a long time. I always tell people, Feel what you speak, not just the words. Feel anything that you have to say. Everything becomes perfect. See, when I speak English, you, like he was talking, it's very alliterative. There is, like he was talking about rhythm and rhyme and things. But you can't teach these things. But when you feel it, see, for instance, you're caught somewhere, you're kidnapped by somebody, and the person is torturing. Do you think about how will I structure my speech now? <laughs> you will say, please. Correct? But you won't ever say, please. <laughs> Just let me go. You know that you'll end up six feet under. Correct? Who teaches that to you then? Yourself. You teach yourself. So teach yourselves. For that, open up. Tell yourself, you need to be in tune. Correct? When I say in tune, I'm not thinking how I have to turn my hand. Do I have to turn it this way, this way, this way? But I'm doing it because my body is completely in tune with my mind. My emotion is completely in tune with my mind. I said, why do you have to do that? I watched a movie a long time ago with Harrison Ford. I can't forget that scene because this child is Oh, the, what do you say? The victim of a, of a terrorist attack, it's a fugitive or something. I don't know which movie it is. It's a beautiful one. And the terrorist IRA, the guy comes and wants to talk to him. All this guy does is just turns around and just moves the finger. And the finger doesn't even move half an inch. But if you feel that if the finger moves even one inch, the fellow is dead. It's like that. You know, I mean, I, that's when I realize the power. Like it just turns and this is all. You got it? But the finger moves just half an inch. But you know, it moves even one inch, the other guy is dead. Okay? But there's no, you know, what is a science to that. Maybe there's a science in explaining, but not in science in doing. So what you have to do is, perhaps, feel free. Like he was talking about stage fright. When I was 12 years old, I was extremely afraid of stage. In fact, I'll give you a small instance. I never went, I used to be extremely uh, comfortable on stage till I was about 8 years old. Uh, I used to go and do drama and everything, but then I got afraid of stage. And when I was in 7th Standard, when I was 12, one day, Independence Day of India, and I was invited and I was asked to speak in front of the school. He was actually preparing the future praying to God. He said, please save me. And in fact, it happened so when my turn came, it started raining. But my headmaster said, no, I'll hold an umbrella. <laughs> I just, but from the time I was 14, I started speaking so much, I'm not stopped from them. <laughs> so, why stage fright? One of the biggest problems with stage fright is 
Because you're afraid of criticism. Because you're afraid what other people will say. How will they feel about the way I move my hands? How will they uh, react to my mistakes? Don't care. You understand? Let them yeah. suffer. <laughs> For a while, till you become the master. Yeah, that's true. And for that reason, we will practice outside one game soon. So, thank you very much. <laughs>